Every time you think about this community, people think negative. You know, oh, a bunch of poor people that live out there. Negativity is a disease I want to kill. This stands right here where you're at in this field has your life laid out for you. One thing that you see are fields. That might be one of your options. You see some big old silos over there. I used to work there. Place closed down. Left hundreds of people without a job. You look to your left, you got a school. That's gonna be an option for you guys one day too. Kids are going to college. They're challenging themselves. You see a federal prison there. It's laid out in front of you guys. Where's he gonna end up at? I said, man, whoever built this stadium was a smart man when he did it. All the houses are on that side. The reason why is because you gotta carry that community on your back. You have to. You gotta give some people that don't have hope hope. Because you guys are gonna make a change. Half of these kids probably come from single family homes, work their summers, parents probably don't speak no English. They all learned how to survive at a young age because of the hardships that they've endured. You know, the word heartbreaking is a pretty good one. It's very different from what a lot of people had to go through. These are the types of images that news outlets will show to show you kind of how destitute a third world country is. When in reality, this place is 40 miles away from Fresno. It's a two hour drive from the Bay Area. I think the last statistic I read on Mendota was that we had 40% unemployment. We're a community of labor, of people coming to our community to look for farm work. The hard working people in Mendota is what we have. Out of the 11,000 people we have in Mendota, probably 99.9% .9 of them are Hispanics. There's a lot of Spanish signs in Mendota because that's what people understand. People that come from Mexico, that don't have much, that want a better life, they come to Mendota. They're searching for the American dream, having their kids go to college, have a better life than what they have right now working in the fields. There's the reality. If you don't do well in school, this is where you end up. Picking these crops, you know, to make a living, it's tough. The droughts that we've had, it's hurt the community. Without any water, there's no fields, there's no crops, and there's no work. As simple as that. Here, it's more of like a, I hope there's food home. And if not, um, maybe tomorrow. It's hard like to see other kids, you know, that are not in our shoes to like, to like just be happy, you know? But it's okay, because we're gonna work for our things. The first time I worked in the fields, I told myself, do I really want to do this? It's hard waking up at four in the morning, doing the same thing all summer. The majority of these kids have to work. We might be closer to 70% of kids have to work to help out their families. In the fields, you're just picking up fruit, vegetables. You're constantly doing something. You're just on your feet all day. It's hot, it's hot out there, too hot. It's about 100 degrees. Sometimes I'll be bleeding from my nose because it's like the heat. We get paid 8.25 an hour. Sometimes we get paid eight dollars an hour. We need money to get to buy our school clothes, so we have to do it. And half of it goes to my mom, help her out, anything she needs, pay the light, pay the rent. We pay bills, we have to. I mean, I'm the only one left in my family, me and my mother. It's, it's a little bit of money it's for hard work. We'll get out about like 2.30, come back, do weightlifting and practice. That's our basically two a days. You guys that are working out in the fields, I can't do nothing about the weather. If you're gassed out, that means you're out of shape. Out of shape teams don't win. When you're tired, you don't want to do shit. No. We were always under 30 players on the team, so that's why we focus a lot on conditioning. Well, pick it up. You better make the damn tie. First of all, don't even act like you guys are tired. 
it works to our advantage. You know, you're talking about a two a day of a minimum of eight hours of continuous hard work, working out there in the sun. And then you come out here and, you know, it makes this easy. Keep messing around, I got this shit all day. I can blow this whistle all day. We'll stay out here all night. Call the security guard to turn on the lights. <laughs> Cause Rian's a crazy man, and he's, I love him. He's like family to me. Let's go, Fredo. He makes me strive for perfection. Why did we miss a block? That's the smartest thing you could have done in a damn two minute drill. Oh, dude, you cannot forget a damn play, man. You will not win a damn game acting like a bunch of idiots. They need to get that tough love so that they know that, hey, when I'm in a pressure situation, even through tough times, I'm loved. Even through tough times, I can succeed. What do you want to eat right now, son? Two hot dogs. <laughs> What's up, Felix, how you doing? I see Isaiah once, once a week and every other weekend. On February 27, 2003, Isaiah was born. He was born at 24 weeks. His due date was June 5th. I was young, I was 20 years old, and you know, my son's mother was 19. It was just a continuous fight for Isaiah. He continued to rattle through it all. You know, that, that alone right there told me, whatever you're taking for granted in your life right now, you need to change it. I had six sisters, no brothers. My mother worked in the fields. My dad started working in the fields at lower paying wages than the, there is now. Just because we have it hard in this town, meaning our employment rates are high, a lot of our parents work in the fields, does not mean we cannot be successful. I said, heck no. It's time to make these people think differently about us. What's their standard working in the fields? the ties that they wear you know, long sleeve shirts before a game, that's more important than running a fly sweeper or, or making a great block. That's what's working out there. Beto Mejia has given them a standard. Just accountability, a little bit more commitment, discipline. It's just a drive that not just me, but my coaches have and these kids have. Before I took over, there was no section titles in football. I'm going into my third year coaching and I've won two section titles. So now we're in a bigger division with uh, maybe some bigger schools. All of a sudden, paying four or six bucks a ticket at a, in a depressed economy wasn't such a big deal because every, they would empty the community for every home game. Financially, the school's doing a lot better with the bigger crowds. The community's doing a lot better. He's one of their own and it matters to him. Mendota matters to Beto Mejia, and his players can see that. Oh, damn! And that's one thing I want these kids to understand, that they're fortunate enough to live this American dream of playing high school football. You got a four-year window, what are you gonna make of it? One game at a time, one day at a time, is how we're gonna take this season. You guys inspire people, man. You guys motivate people. But you guys got to believe in yourselves as well. I can't want it for you. Rodrigo's currently in the process of defeating leukemia. The words out of this kid's mouth is that it's all right. I'm going to beat this disease. So when you guys are told by a coach, hustle, do it again, stop walking. Think about a kid like him that wish he was in your situation. Rodrigo, do you wish you could be playing football? Any doubt that you have in your mind, you better throw that out the window. You better give it more than what you ever gave it. You guys have inspired this kid. This kid has inspired me to make me realize I'm gonna make the most of everything. I'm not gonna use excuses. You're from Mendota, so? It's too hot, so? You make us run too much, so? If a kid could go through life and battle it and say, I'm gonna win, then this game should be easy to you guys. Do not make no excuses. Don't leave any doubt behind. <laughs> bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Bring it up, let's go, let's go. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. You want some? Go get it, go.
the enrollment didn't change, the personality of the school didn't change, the demographics didn't change. What changed? Beto Mejia and Edgar Segura. There it is. There it is. Last year, Edgar rushed for 2,500 yards, 500 more than his sophomore year. If he scores 38 touchdowns, he'll hold a section record in touchdowns, and if he rushes for over 3,000 yards, he'll break that record for rushing yards as well. I know why I need you to get a lot of stats, because I need you to go to college. That guy's trying to become the first kid from Mendoza to play college football, Division I school where he could play college football. I want to play in the next level in college. It's going to be hard, because we're not, we don't have that much money. He has the physical fitness and the strength to compete at any level. And sometimes I see it in the, in, in the website and the internet, this kid can't play. I want to show them that how hard work to show you you could do anything. He's always in position where it's like don't blink because he might score a touchdown. Outside, outside! <laughs> He yells too much, eh? He yells like if he was a cop or something, or he did something bad. Oh, dude, that's a horrible call! Dude, they started with a bunch of bull again, man! We're setting up a fun return, so do you want him not to block him? When there's 12 penalties on Mendota and only two on the other team, he will stand up for his guys. We love it. Luis Morrow, did that referee tell you you're ugly? There it is. Now I gotta go send him to the school psychologist. Dude, ain't nobody want to see a bunch of poor Mexicans and a poor coach win, bro. I mean, that's why I like coaching in Mendota. Good game, guys. Good game. You guys, too. Good game. Good game. Good game. Man, I hope you take pride in that, man. That was classes. And what? OK. Good game. Hey, no one going to give you respect, man. You better go get it. I promise you that. We just beat a team something, and they call me classless, and I better take pride in that. Yeah, I take pride in the team I coach. I take pride in my hard work. What I tell you, if you don't think you're the best, no one else will. That guy don't think I'm the best. But guess what? Good thing I do, and I believe in you guys. Ah, boom, boom. Just stupid Mexicans without papers. Illegal immigrants, that's what people think. I'd say probably 75% of the whole town doesn't, wouldn't have papers. Yeah. In about 2007, there was word that uh, they had raided some homes in, in Mendota. There's a, a term in, in Spanish, por unos pagan otros, uh, some pay for others, you know, and if you're there at that location uh, where they, they're looking for a person that has a warrant, but yet you don't have documents, you're going to go too. I remember uh, the vans uh, loading people. I remember them, uh, a couple vans going to a, uh, to a family and taking the parents and even the kids there. It was crazy because my dad didn't have papers. He wasn't a legal citizen at that time. And it was hard, especially for my family. We didn't know what to think if they would have found my dad. Everybody that's illegal has to have a fear at some point. The immigration rate that they had. I mean, that could happen at any time that they wanted to. We can't stop them from coming into Mendota. Pues me pasaron por por el cerro, pues un un hombre que pasa gente de Tijuana, México. Ahorita ya tengo el permiso de de trabajo. En el campo, pues es lo gana uno lo mínimo, pero salgo a ganar. Without the game, Edgar probably wouldn't be in school no more. He probably would be working right now in the fields with his mother. Oh, pues, la gente sabe que lo como es Edgar. Es un buen muchacho y él no no anda en la calle ni nada. Finish right here. El papá de Edgar está está en la cárcel. Sophomore year, I got my first letter was the Oregon, the camp one. And when I opened it and I saw the poster, I realized that I could do big things. If I have good grades and I'm good at football, I could get a full ride for football and this, my college will be paid off. The challenges are 
learn how to like speak really good because we only speak Spanish in our, at my house. And when I come to school, we'll talk English and it's kind of hard to just keep it the same pace. No one has offered him any scholarships yet. His grades might have put him in a little situation where he's really gonna have to turn it up here. You know, coming from a single family home, being from a small community, they're in position to fail with all those odds against him. How much do you get from schools right now? Right now, nothing right now. I haven't got anything. What are your hopes? Hopefully it just, I had at least I had coaches to come see me play. At least so they could see I could play. If not, then it's all right. He's like a dad to me. He's been there when I needed help. He's been there to tell me what's good and what's wrong. When that senior night came, it's like, man, it's here. Like, this is it. Let's do it. Hey, we just get the win, though. Let's get the win. If we make that history, it's all good. Let's get it. Before this game, Edgar was five touchdowns short away from tying the central section record in touchdowns and six from breaking it. Going into the half, I only had two touchdowns. I needed four more. Kind of just like hit, you know, all the touchdown after another touchdown, and then it's like, oh man. History, baby! Yeah! Good job, baby. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, kid. I love you, man. There was like two or three minutes left. I already had a title of the record, but only had one touchdown left to break it. Hey, let me put this guy in there to get a pick six. Next thing you know, Edgar, get in there. Put him in there. Safety. Edgar! Oh! 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 It's unbelievable. I never thought I would have done this, especially me as a small kid in a small town. I don't know what to say. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Now it's time that we win a team goal, not an individual goal. That's a damn championship, league title. The town of Faribault has no respect for Mendota. They're calling the best player in our team, Basura. He's garbage. Segura is Basura. My last name is Trash. I was like, damn, that's what they really think about me, huh? Mendota, we have a lot of Mexicans who work in the fields. Faribault, most of that town has money. I think a lot of those people look down on us for whatever reason. Keep on adding fuel to my fire. You know, at the end of the day, you should stick around afterwards and see us celebrate. That kid's amazing. He's amazing. What I remember about that game is jumping over that guy. <laughs> if I could have put up 100 points on par, I would have. They look at us and they look like a, poor, a poverty town. We literally work for this and they hate this. And they hate seeing us succeed. Every time they see Mendota or our team, they probably think, 25 guys, really? All small. And here they come with about 50 players, trying to intimidate us. They got no idea what's going to happen tonight. Touchdown! The taller you are, the harder you fall. Size don't matter when you play games. You put up 52 points. Everybody knows that Edgar's the Batman of the team. But we always had a Robin, one-man team. Yeah, then beat us. If it's a one-man team, then beat us. I believe we should all be comedians when we play other teams. Yeah, we end up kicking their ass, but they have a laugh out of it. Come on, hey, you want some hot chocolate? You need to tell your Aunt Julie to stop ragging on you, Joe. Come on. We're winning games. We're picking this community up because they see us, how we work in the fields. We do a lot of things. So they just look at us and like, oh, well, these kids are doing it, why can't we? You know, there ain't no next week because this is where the season ends.
I know we're going to be outsized. I know they're going to have some big guys. I don't care. I need everything from you. Every ounce of you physically and mentally tonight. It's all about challenging. But now you're at the finish line. Let's go through it. It is important that we execute every play from here on out. What I say we have to do with turnovers? Score. score. Did we score? Yeah. Yes. But then we came back and gave him a bull touchdown. Play to your potential the second half and you'll win this shit. There's people that coach their whole life and tell their players, get me, get there, get there. You guys are here. It's for the taking. He's cramping. Edgar, do you got it in you? Four down territory. That kid's given us everything we could ask for and more. Touchdown! Yeah! He did great. I mean, uh, we can't all rely on Edgar. It, to win a championship, it takes a team. Winning D5 championship would have made a statement, but it didn't happen. The name in New Jersey. Very proud of playing for them. Never again am I gonna wear it. Those emotions tell me that those kids were able to live a dream, but eventually they're waking up from this dream and it's time to go tackle a different dream. There's some bigger mountains to climb now. We have to work for everything we get. It sets out a statement to everyone that that has nothing. We could achieve something. Something bigger than just the game of football. These are hardworking kids with a lot of pride, and they're looking for the American dream just like anybody else. They are. To me, the American dream is to play professional football. How hard we work, that's what I want them to hear. From people to say, where's he from? And people to answer, he's from Mendota.